to Luke chapter number 18, and we're going to start reading down in verse number 35. The Bible says, And it came to pass that as he was come nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passeth, passeth by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which before rebuked him that he should hold his peace, but he cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith has saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for the reading of your word. Lord, we do thank you again for the opportunity to be here. Lord, I thank you for the message you've laid upon my heart. Lord, I just ask you just help me, Lord. Uh, Lord, just hide me behind the cross. Lord, help me give it to your people here tonight the same way you gave it to me. Lord, that it can be a help to each and every one of us here. Lord, that uh, each and every one of us leave out of here tonight closer to you than we was when we came in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first thing I want to look at is we just simply see who we're talking about here in verse number 35, and it's talking about the blind man. Uh, uh, we see this blind man, he's sitting by the wayside begging, and, and today, actually, you know, I, I kept thinking, uh, uh, you know, talking about the blind man, and I look, and I mentioned earlier about this confused world that we have. And, you know, you look at the world, and you see that the shape that the world is in, and it's easy to look at it and think, well, you know, all these lost people and all the things that they have, have done to ruin our country and ruin this world, and it's easy to throw off on the lost people. Can I say, I don't really think it's their fault, Brother Donald. What do we expect out of lost people? What are we doing to change the world? And see, too often we, we, we physically, all of us here physically might be able to see, but too many times we are blinded by our own excuses. Um, yeah, I'm not trying to be mean. I know there are people at work. There are people who providentially cannot be here tonight. But I'm sure there are some that could be here that chose not to be here. There are some that could be here on Sunday that will choose not to be there on Sunday. Why? Because we're blinded by our excuses. Because too many times we think we are an exception to the rule. We want to come up and think, well, it's okay if I don't show up because I'm not going to be missed or I'm not that important or whatever it may be. And we become too blind by our excuses and think we're an exception. And as the world sees us, why do I need God if that's how you live your life and you say you're going to heaven? See, we have to understand and remember that we have a lost and dying world watching us every single day. But we see this blind man sitting by the roadside, and we see him begging uh, also in verse number 35. Uh, uh, too many times, I'm just going to skip over this. So we see the blind man, we see the begging, but in verse number 39, we see something here that uh, would do us all a little bit of good. In verse 38, and it says, And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And then what happens? They all try to shut him up. They went before, and they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But what happened? We see his boldness. But he cried so much the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. What has happened with our boldness? What has happened with our willingness just to share Christ? What is happening with our willingness? We don't have to go out and shove it down anybody's throats or, or we don't have to go out and be mean or rude. Or, what about just telling others what Christ has done for us? What has happened to that boldness, just willing to speak up and speak out and just tell people what God's done for us? We have no idea what it, how it could change somebody's life if we would have that same boldness as this blind man did. Not only do we see the boldness, but then we see what happens in verse number 40. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. Who have we brought? Who have we brought? We know then that he says, and when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou shall I what wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? How many people have we brought? How many people have we uh, been we've been in church all these years? When was the last time you invited anybody to church? When was the last time you physically told somebody, Hey, uh, this is where I go to church at, we would love to have you? When was the last time you physically told somebody about, uh, hey, I know a good church in your area you should go attend? 
When was the last time we tried to bring anybody to the house of God? When was the last time we tried to bring anybody uh, uh, to Jesus Christ? And we see, lastly, we see in verse number uh, 43, And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God, and all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. We see him going behind. What did he want to do? He followed. He just followed. God, Jesus had just touched him, had just healed him, had just given him him sight, and he just wanted to follow. I would be willing to say that most of us in here on our Wednesday night crowd have been saved. God's touched us. God's healed us. God's given us a, 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 a sight. He, he's taken us out of that darkness. Are we following him? As I've said before, just because you're here doesn't mean you're following him. This isn't that difficult to get ready and come to church. Really not. Really not all that hard. Are we truly following Him? But what I want to preach on can be found in verse number 40. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him. And we know what he said. I was listening to preaching on Monday at work. And just this little phrase somebody used and just talking about something else, and it just kind of struck me. His commanding voice. You can go through and find many times in the Bible where Jesus commands something to be done. His commanding voice. Can I say this? Number one, His commanding voice instructs. What did it do here in verse number 40? He instructed them to bring this blind man to them. And not only does it instruct here, if we read 2 Timothy in chapter 3 and verse 16, all Scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for what? For instruction in righteousness. His commanding voice instructs. It can instruct us uh, throughout our, our entire life and, he, and our walk, and we'll get to that a little bit later. But His commanding voice instructs instructs. There, there's many different times we can go through uh, the Bible and Jesus' walk and he talks about he commanded the disciples to go to the other side or he commands the disciples to get into the ship. All these different times that his voice commands them and instructs them to do something. Not only does his commanding voice instruct, not only that, it also creates. In Genesis chapter number 1, and this is just you know, this is going to be how my mind, maybe, I guess you might say, works a little bit different, Brother Phil, than everybody else's. But this kind of got me excited. Think about this. And I was thinking about this. I don't mean to embarrass her with her boyfriend here. But, Miss Sydney, I was thinking about this today. Wouldn't it be awesome if you personally knew LeBron James? Of, of somebody that could do the things he could do with the basketball. I love to watch golf, as I've talked. It would be awesome if I personally knew Tiger Woods. I wouldn't be able to beat Zach, probably. You know, Tiger might teach him. How. We, we think it would be awesome to know these certain people because of the things that they possess. Can I tell you, we know somebody, Brother Donald, that when he speaks, sure. it happens. In Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1, we know, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form, and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And in verse 3, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. His commanding voice creates. And we could go through and we could read the rest of Genesis chapter number 1, and, and we have all these things that we think in this world are so awesome. We, have, we survey God that His voice, when He speaks, it happens. He says it, Brother Phil, and it happens. You know, and we'll get to something else a little bit later that He does. You know, we, we survey God that too many times I'm afraid that we want to take Him. I have no idea what these little things are. We take Him, we just want to put Him in this little box. He's way bigger than that. He, we, see, we want to constrain him that he can only do this or only do that. No, he's a God that he, everything that we can go outside, we could go outside tonight and look at everything around us, he created just by saying, let it be there. And boom, it was there. Do you realize whatever it is that you're going through tonight, he can just say, be gone. And you know, I'm not trying to be little or anything and just poof, it can be gone. It's just that simple with God. He, we serve such a wonderful God that His commanding voice, that His voice, creation, took place. We, like I said, we could read through all those things in the rest of, of Genesis chapter number 1, all those things 
that he created. And that just, you know, to, to me, I was thinking, I honestly, I was thinking about that today, Brother Donald. It was, it was making the hair on the back of my neck stand up thinking, I serve a God that can just speak one word. And it happened. Yet you know, we lose sight of that. Sure. Just all it takes is just one word. Right. It can happen. And, and just that one word, and, and, and I, I don't know how this all this is going to go down. I, I don't know, Brother Donald, I have no clue how this is going to happen, but I just happen to think that maybe Jesus is sitting there on the right-hand side of the Father, and he's just gonna, he might just have to look at him. He knows what that's going to mean, Brother Ray, and boom, he's coming to get us just like that. That should get us excited. That should give us something to look forward to. Amen. His commanding voice, not only does it instruct, not only does it create, it's also toned. In Matthew chapter number 21, in verse number 12, the Bible says, And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Now, verse number 13. Now, I could be wrong here. And said unto them, It is written, My house should be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Now, I don't know, Brother Phil, but I'm thinking he didn't just go up and whisper that to him. I'm thinking that if he overthrew that table, Brother, uh, 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 Brother Tom, he was pretty upset. And I don't think he, he, he referred to that, my house should be called the house of prayer, but you've made it in the thieves. You guys, you've corrupted this place now. I'm pretty sure that's not how that went. He had a little different tone. Now, now that, that voice, that, that he can have that tone. What does he come by Elijah? We just had this read uh, a few weeks ago. I think it was Brother Doug in 1 Kings chapter 19 and verse number 12. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, what? A still, small voice. Right. His commanding voice can be toned. I don't want to hear the one with the money changers. I don't want to hear that one. Yeah. Too many times I have myself in position, that might be the one I hear. Josh, what are you doing? Why can't you do this? Why does this have to be so hard for you? That's not the one that we desire to hear, hopefully. But too many times, that's the one we hear. I've never had to yell out, you know, just because you all think so, she can be aggravating. I have never yelled out, Isabella Maria. Now, I've yelled out, Caitlin Michelle, more than one time. We use that different tone with our kids. God sometimes will have to use that different tone with us. Where are we at in our worship of him? Where are we at in living our life for him? Hopefully we don't get that tone that he used in Matthew chapter number 21 when he had to throw over the money changers. Not only does it instruct, it create, and it's toned, but it also carries. In Mark chapter number 6, I just can't imagine this. <clears throat> in Mark chapter number 6, in verse 34, it says, And Jesus, when he, saw, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were the sheep not having a shepherd and began to teach them many things. Now, we know the story here between that and the next verse I'll read in verse 44. We know that he's come and he, he wants to feed them. They don't have anything. So they take the basket and, and the five loaves and a couple fishes and they feed all these people. And he gets to verse 44, And they that did eat of the loaves were about 5,000 men. So then we can begin to discuss how many people were there. Well over 5,000, Brother Donald. So I want you to think about that. So he came, so much people, was moved with compassion, and he began to teach them many things. Over 5,000 people. He didn't have a nice pretty auditorium. He didn't have a nice pretty mic he was wearing on his shirt, Brother Tommy. None of those kinds of things. His voice carried. Well out to all those people. We can find multiple times when he goes to teach people, and you see him there. There's uh, one of the times where he just pushes out away in the boat and teaches all them that are on, on, the, on the seashore, on the seaside, whatever. His voice carries. He has a voice that carries. Amen. Let me say this for the last part. <clears throat> I'm not done. I promise we're not going to have this early. I actually told Brother Randy last week, I'm going to tell this because this is funny and, you know, Brother Doug got done last Wednesday night, and I, it was close to 8 o'clock, and I told Brother Randy, I said, Lord willing, I'm supposed to preach next week. We get out of here this early this week and that early next week. I said, they're going to get too used to that. We're going to have to be careful. And so actually what you all don't know yet is here in just a few minutes, we're going to take a short intermission. You're going to be allowed to go out and get you a drink of water, and we're going to come back in. We're going to have message number two. No, I'm just kidding. Not only does it carry but it also brings peace. In Luke chapter number 8, and verse number 24, 
And they came unto him and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. A week ago, we know that they say, Who is this that even the winds and the waves obey his voice? His commanding voice brings peace. Brother Clint just sang it. It is well with my soul. Why is it well with our soul? If it's well with your soul tonight, it's because his commanding voice brings peace. That you know that no matter what happens, you're going to have peace. The question then that I want to ask you tonight is, are you listening? We can get on, I alluded to, you know, having to yell out one of our kids and, and we yell out our kids and, and too many times after we yell at them, the next thing that we say, are they even listening to me? Have you ever had that, Brother Aaron? Are they even listening? Are, are they even paying attention to anything I'm telling them? We, they, they go out as they grow older. Uh, you know, Miss Caitlin, she's at work, so hopefully she's not on break and watching. They get older and they go out into life and, and they come back and they say, I, I told you. Did you not listen to anything I said? Are you listening? Are you listening to his voice? Do you allow it to instruct you? How, how open are we to the instruction of God? It is easy to open up this Bible, and it's easy to open up and go back and read, and we want to talk about uh, Jesus coming, and we talk about heaven, and oh, what a wonderful time it's going to be there. But when we open it up and it begins to point out the sin we may have in our life, when it begins to point out the things that we're not doing of what we should do for God, it becomes very easily then to just close it up and say, eh, we'll read tomorrow, maybe we'll pick up someplace different. Maybe we'll open up the Bible and we'll let it follow it up something a little bit nicer tomorrow. Are we allowing it to instruct us? How often do we allow God to instruct us in our walk? We said that not only did His commanding voice instruct, are we allowing it to instruct us? We said it's, it creates. Do we allow it to instruct us and follow the path that He's created for us? I used to say this in jail. I'll say it here. Uh, you, you cannot argue this fact with me. God has a purpose for each and every one of us. If he did not, we would not be here. My own belief, and you'll not convince me otherwise, God has something for each and every one of us to do. It could be you might be a prayer warrior. You might be somebody that can stand at the back door and shake hands and welcome people in. You might be somebody that's called to preach. You might be a missionary. You might be a preacher's wife, a missionary's wife. I have no idea what it might be. But God has something for all of us to do. And He has already created. He has already laid out that path. He's done everything we need to be successful in that if we're willing to walk down it. That's what's crazy. That's what is just amazing is that, that God wants nothing but the best for us. And if we fail too many times, that, that's on us. Because we're not willing to follow the path that God has for us. We want to do things our own way. Well, God might want me to preach, so I'm going to go down here and preach, or I'm going to go do this, or I'm going to go do that. How many people do we know that maybe, hey, I just want to, uh, 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 to move and just go someplace? And, uh, uh, warmer. I would love to move someplace warmer. We're fixing to come up here uh, in you know, however long. It's going to start getting cold, and I've gotten to the point in my life I hate the cold. I absolutely hate it. I'm good, Brother Phil. It can have one three-inch snowfall, preferably about opening day of deer season. It'd be a lot more fun, a lot easier to deer hunt, and then be done. And go back up to about the 70s or 80s, and I'd be good. So I, I would be, I'd love to move. I'd move tomorrow. That don't mean God's in it. That don't mean the path God has for me is to move someplace warmer, to move to Myrtle Beach, or move down to Florida. Either one of those two would be good with me. How often are we willing to follow the path God's created for us? God knows exactly what tomorrow brings. We get so worried about tomorrow and so worried about what we can't see that it keeps us too many times from what God has for us. We get too scared about what may be on the other side. We get too worried about what if, what if this happens or what if that happens. I, I talked about it in the devotion last week, the devotion on Monday, our, our fear of committing to what God has for us. It's just that fear of not being able to be in control. We, we, we throw, make fun or we throw off on people with OCD and always want to be in control, but we all are that way to an extent. I'm good with everything God has for me, Brother Donald, as long as I can control it right here. If you want me to do something else, you know, now we're stepping out a little bit. Are we willing to follow the path that it's created? 
Do we know the difference in his tones? Are we able to discern his voice? When we, as our pastor talks about, and there's many times, and, and look, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not super spiritual. I, 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 I don't know. But it is amazing to me, even Brother Christian, the time Brother Doug will ask, anybody got a testimony? And somebody raise their hand and give a prayer request. He didn't ask for a prayer request. You might, if you really wanted to get it off, tell him beforehand. Let him write it down. How do we know the difference and are we able to discern his voice when God is telling us something as opposed to when we feel like doing something? I can tell you a lot of times I get wrapped up in feelings, but what is God telling us to do? Do we know the difference in his tone? No matter who we might be, we can all think back and we know the difference in our parents' tones. We know the difference. I already talked about yelling at our kids. We know the difference and we have to get on them. Do we know the difference in the tone that God has to use for us? Does his voice carry any weight in your life beyond these walls? We all come in here, we can put on our Sunday best, our Wednesday best, we can come in here, we can shout, we can praise, we can sing, we can do all the right things. What about outside of here? What kind of weight does his voice carry in our life outside of here? We go to do something that we know uh, is wrong. We know in the back of our mind what I'm about to do here I should not be doing, I shouldn't be partaking in. Does his voice carry enough weight to be able to step back and say, I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm just going to step away. I'm not going to do it. It can be hard. I'm not saying that, look, we're all going to do something we're not proud of. Probably tomorrow. Maybe even before we get through the rest of today. But does his voice carry the weight outside of here that we know? I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have sat there and listened to that person tell that joke, or I shouldn't have went and done this or done that or whatever it may be. What kind of weight does his voice carry beyond these walls? Too many times we come in here, we, we have a world out there that's lost, that's going to hell, that is confused, that is fearful, and us as Christians live just like they do outside of these walls because his voice carries no weight in our life. Why? Because we don't have that peace. What did Brother Clinton sing about? It is well with our soul. What kind of peace do we have? What kind of peace do we give off outside of these walls? What kind of peace does that world see us have? We have a, you see everything and you know all the thing that's, that's going on in the world today and, and all the nonsense and craziness that's going on. And it's not just have to be a, a, about COVID and all this, not, it's just everything going on. And, and I, I, look, I don't know what this has to do with it, but God's put it on my mind and put it on my heart, and so I'm, I'm going to say it. You have this little girl, this young lady from wherever she was from, up north someplace, that Gabby Petito, whatever that's her name, that's gone missing, looking for her boyfriend. I didn't know anything about this dog, the bounty hunter, whoever this guy is that has now taken over. I had no idea. And all my guys at work, a bunch of them, they all watch. And I guess this guy, he was big and famous. And this bounty hunter, never, they knew who he was and all this. So the FBI has been looking for this guy, Brother Ray, for whatever it's been now, two weeks. In the same little place down in Florida, whatever, they, you know, I figured gators have eaten him or whatever. So this dog, the bounty hunter guy, now comes out and he's going to go find him. And all of a sudden, within what, two days, three days, he's got it all down now to some island down there in the middle of wherever he's at. And everybody's giving him all these leads and all these tips and all these things. Why didn't they reach out and tell all the FBI and the police and all these other people all these things before now? Just, just out of curiosity. Why, if all these people knew this, why aren't they telling the people in charge? Why? Because we're confused. We look at him. We was talking about this at work. People look at him and think he's a celebrity and they want to help him because we want that celebrity status. We need to be more like Shaq yesterday or day before last week when there was and said he didn't want to have anything to do with that celebrity status and he had to talk like crazy people but that's how we are too many times we just want to fit in with the world well i'm not talking about being a celebrity status so to speak we just want to fit in with the world we want to hook ourselves up to somebody in the world and therefore we don't have that peace that god can give we get back to that whole his voice carries no weight outside of these walls in our life because we're going to do what i want to do when I'm on the job, I'll act and do what I want to do. And we'll, we'll do all these things that we want to do that we think is best, and then we have no peace. 
We have no peace in our life. The, the slightest little thing comes into our life and we fall apart. We just, we just, we completely lose it at the smallest little thing, the smallest little hiccup, hiccup uh, in our life. Why? Because we don't have His peace. It's not well with our soul. God desires for us to have His peace that only He can give. The peace that, what the Bible tells us, the peace that passeth all understanding. I don't have to go through all this stuff worried. I'm not talking about not being smart and not doing the right things, but I don't have to go through this whole life, everything worried about every day about what's going to happen. God will take care of us. If we will just trust Him and listen to His voice, God will take care of us. Listen to His commanding voice. He will give us the peace that we need. Whatever it is that you're going through, He will give us that peace. It's through His commanding voice voice. Brother Clint, you come and get your guitar. Pray, play something softly. I'll ask you today, do you listen to his voice? Do you listen to his commanding voice in your life? That voice that, that just said, let there be light, and just like that there was light. If you don't think he can't speak light into existence, and he can't speak the firmament and all that thing into existence, he can take care of you tonight too, my friend. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for your voice. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, how you can use that to speak to us. Lord, I ask you to speak to hearts now during this invitation. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.